two ways. We can complain. We can display the characteristics which have worked for us in the past. Or we can discover what we are passionate about, what we love about life, what we admire in humans, and give birth to that. The first two, complaining and what has worked in the past, are both based in the past. Complaints are based on something which has occurred in the past. Oftentimes, to simply get things done or to solve problems, we rely on what has proven to work for us in the past. But the third way of dealing with a challenge, trying to discover what we are passionate about, is future-based. It gives us the opportunity to draw on something within us which is bigger and grander than who we have known ourselves to be. James Maxwell, one of the great scientists of the past few hundred years, once said, Quote, what is done by what is called myself is, I feel, done by something greater than myself in me. End quote. Let me add to Maxwell's quote that knowing this greater self in me and acting from it are acts of intuition, plain and simple. The first way to respond to a challenge is complaining. All humans began life being able to make requests. Mommy, I want ice cream, or Daddy, I want to go to the soccer game. Somewhere around the age of five or six, our ability to make requests stops and complaining begins. Then we begin to say, I hate vegetables. Or, why don't you ever take me anywhere? A complaint means that there's something wrong which needs to be fixed. When you don't make requests, complaints begin. Underneath every complaint is a commitment to repeat underneath every complaint is a commitment. We complain only when we are committed to something. A complaint is a criticism, an accusation, objection, protest, or disapproval. A commitment is a promise, quest, a pledge, or duty. Complaints don't look like commitments. Complaints don't sound like commitments. And we usually don't hear a commitment in a complaint. But underneath every complaint is a commitment. Hearing the commitment underneath the complaint is an act of intuition. To listen intuitively for a commitment does not arise from focusing on the words being spoken. Hearing the commitment in another's speaking is the result of listening for, not listening to. A wonderful thing about our life is that we will always hear what we are listening for. If you listen for love, you will hear another's interest in love. If you listen for compassion, you will hear their compassion. And if you listen for their greatness, then you will hear what is great about them. It's amazing but true. We will always hear what we are listening for. Why listen for the commitment? One very important reason is that if I listen for the commitment in another's complaint, they will most likely want to become my partner. Antonio 
might complain about employees who have the educational requirements for the job but who can't pre perform their job and who don't take available opportunities to make improvements in their knowledge and in how they work. If I say, Antonio, you are such a complainer. You always focus on the worst of people. Do you think that Antonio is likely to want to be my partner? To share my interests and agendas? No. If I say, Antonio, that's the way it is. So don't get yourself depressed. Do you think that this will likely leave Antonio motivated to be my partner, share my interests and agendas? No. But if I listen for his commitment and say, Antonio, it seems to me that you feel very strongly about people using their full potential and that you care about people. I appreciate that in you, then Antonio is more likely to be enrolled in what I wish to accomplish. If you hear another's commitment, then you are more likely to respond to them with kindness and understanding. And this increases the likelihood of partnership. There is less hurt and less rupturing of the group when you listen for commitments. Listening for commitments is not about manipulating others. People are committed to something when they complain. The choice is yours as to how to listen. Listening to the complaint is listening to their smallness. Listening for their commitment is listening to their greatness. They are small and they are also great. How you listen to them is your choice. When people are not heard for what they are committed to, they are more likely to stop communicating, to give up, and to accept mediocrity. When you hear a complaint, you're listening to someone who cannot or will not make a request. And you're listening to someone who is settling for ordinary. Their being extraordinary comes from your listening for their commitment. The second response to a challenge is to use what has worked in the past. For some, what helps us succeed are intelligence. For others, it is charm or persistence or friendliness. For others, it is rudeness and manipulation. Regardless of what characteristics work for you, they can only take you so far. Think of the characteristics you use as survival mechanisms. They help us succeed. But great leaders are known for something else. It is not their intelligence or charm which sets them apart. What sets them apart is that they stand for something noble and generous. The third way we can respond is through being a possibility. What is possible in life? Well, nothing is possible in the past because the past is past. But everything is possible in the future. In fact, we can say that the future will represent one of an infinite number of possibilities. Remember the saying, quote, if you don't stand for something, then you'll fall for anything, end quote. So ask yourself, what are you passionate about? What do you love about life? 
What qualities of human beings do you admire the most? After you've decided by searching your heart intuitively, then allow your actions to reflect your answer. If you admire generosity, then be generous. Be the possibility of generosity. And ask yourself what generosity means in whatever situation you find yourself. Ask your intuition, what would generosity say and do in the situation you're in at the moment? And say and do that. In other words, ask your intuition, what is at your core? And be consistent with that. You may be surprised at how creative you become when you act on the basis of possibility. But you shouldn't be. Because when you do this, you will be handing yourself over to something larger than who you know yourself ordinarily to be. Transcending this smaller self, you will get out of your own way and allow your fuller intelligence to come forth. Remember James Maxwell saying, what is done by what is called myself is, I feel, done by something greater than myself in me. Intuition is a very efficient resource. Through it, you can express the knowledge you've accumulated over the years through your experiences. Most of what, you, what you've experienced remains unconscious, unexpressed, and unutilized. However, it is available to each of you. Being creative, having and expressing a vision, requires going beyond what you are conscious of. This means going beyond analytical thinking. It means using your intuition. I encourage you to take a step, take another step in this direction. Thank you, Dr. France. Let us continue the second question and answer session. The first question is from Mexico. It's from the state of Chihuahua. It's La Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua in Chihuahua, Mexico. What motivates people to change, to learn, to see the future, to think about the future, revision it? Well, I, I would say that um, you know individuals have to have a stake in the future, and they have to feel that what they say can make a difference, and. In order to assure that as much as possible, it means that everyone needs to be listened to. And I, I believe that if you listen carefully to everyone, that you will find that in an organization that everyone really has something very important to contribute. So it's really in your listening of other people that motivates them to contribute and to change. Thank you. The next call is from Mexico. It's from the state of Sinaloa. It's the Colegio de Bachilleres Estado de Sinaloa in Mazatlán, Sinaloa, Mexico. Good morning. What do you think is essential from the Eastern culture, which is currently being so appreciated and so followed here in the West? Uh, yeah, it, it's true. The Eastern culture has been given a lot of credit. But the thing is, is that at the core of every human being is the same wisdom that has been expressed verbally from the Eastern cultures. It's, it's really in every one of us. And we could use them as, um, 
uh, you know, we could use them as 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 uh, figureheads or as lights or as examples, but it's in every one of us. Our next question is from Mexico. It's from Baja California, from the Centro Universitario de Tijuana in Baja California, Mexico. Buenos días. How can we achieve that an a organization that has been created by intuition and through intuition and be, thanks to intuition, how can we let it be enhanced and perfected through the analytical thinking? Uh, the way to achieve an organization that can be affected by it is, is first of all, in allowing it to flourish. Um, and I would say that allowing it to flourish um, is probably the, the largest, um, you know, single um, constraint that you have. Um, once it's allowed to flourish, then I think there's just no stopping. And allowing it to flourish means understanding that intuition is a natural byproduct of the brain, of everybody's brain. And it, in, in one sense, it's nothing more than the way in which the brain functions. The next question is also from Mexico. It's from La Universidad Autónoma del Estado de México in Toluca, in the state of Mexico, Mexico. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. My question is the following. Just as the analytical reasoning can also make mistakes if, if you feed it wrong information, what are the factors and elements that make our intuition not an advantage but an obstacle for the creative thinking? And what would you recommend us in order to strengthen that qualifying and holistic part of the human being? Yes, intuition can make mistakes if you feed it wrong information. And that's why you need to be open to observing your intuition. Have an intuition, write it down, and discover for yourself if there's a certain time of day that your intuitions are more accurate, if there's a certain day of the week that your intuition is more accurate. And, and when you make mistakes, just chalk it up to experience and and learn for yourself when your intuition is speaking the clearest to you. Thank you for your excellent questions, but we have run out of time. Thank you again, Mr. Hoffman and Dr. France. We hope that you have enjoyed participating in this video conference. We invite you to participate on December 3rd, 1998, in the new competitive cooperative economy, benchmarking and competitive intelligence, which will be the 12th and final program of our 1998 series entitled Competitive Success with a Global Focus. On behalf of all of us who collaborate with the International Training Center, I thank you for your participation and interest in today's program. Thank you and see you again soon.